There is no singer who can evoke emotion quite like Sarah McLachlan, whether it's compassion, loss, heartbreak, or yes, hope. McLaughlin's music shows compassion like none other. Now the Grammy award-winning singer-songwriter has returned to the recording studio with Shine On, her first album of original music in four years. And Sarah joins us now to tell us more. Recently you had to answer some questions about um, your sexuality and I think you said something along the lines of, I'm very, st I'm definitely straight, but yeah, pretty much straight. Pretty much straight, <laughs> but you know, couple drinks, who hasn't sort of kissed a girl? Well, you know what, I, I, I don't believe that we get to choose who we fall in love with and I, you know, I, I never say never about anything because you just, you just don't know. Um, I love people. I love human beings. There's a lot of women I've loved. I haven't necessarily loved them sexually. Uh, I tip, I bend to men, most definitely. Uh, that being said, you never know. You know, I'm in a great relationship right now and I, you know, he's a wonderful man and I kind of can't imagine not being with him. But my, my point is, is that, you know, life is long and, uh, I'm, I'm pretty much straight, so I know I keep I keep kind of circling around that, but <laughs> you I'm just, taken. You know, I'm you straight. You're in <laughs> a wonderful relationship right now, which is of I course am. a very good thing to hear. Talk to me about you know you've you've mentioned before you've written about what's your sex life after divorce like? I mean, do you have to sort of find yourself oh, again. God, I know where this is going. Um, my boyfriend actually just phoned me and said, "Do you know what you said in McLean's magazine, which is our big you know national magazine?" I said, "I, I had more sex in the last year than I've had in my entire life." Isn't that a testament to him, right? <laughs> Shouldn't he feel but great? I'm, now I'm that. saying it here too, but I said, oh God, that was my inside voice. I didn't know I was actually, I forget <laughs> that I'm talking to journalists sometimes. I just, I don't have much of an edit button. But thank God my dad's dead. You see, that would be horrible. No, I'm kidding. I mean, but it, it, he would be horrified if I, I, I couldn't say something like that. If he would be, that would just embarrass the hell out of me. Rolling over in his grave right now, yeah. listening to. Oh, sorry, Dad. You've had no, actually, he'd probably be happy. The, Ariana Huffington has a new book out called Thrive, and she talks about sort of redefining. It's in a good title. Yeah. Redefining success beyond money, beyond power. Mm -hmm. And she thrives by things like yoga, meditation. She takes a lot of naps. We're big sleepers here at the Huffington Post. What do you do to thrive? <laughs> um... A lot of things. I, I, I like to feed my higher consciousness. I mean, I do a lot of yoga. I love hiking. I love being out in nature. Um, I love meaningful conversations. I love real conversations uh, with friends. I love having people over for dinner um, and just engaging. And I love, 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 love playing live for that reason of, of we're all constantly looking for connection. Um, and in the age that we live in of technology and, and computers, which is a fantastic and amazing tool, but it does create sometimes more separation between like, I love this, so we're sitting here talking, but we're also using the technology. It's a great, a great blend, but um, I've just completely lost my train of thought. What were we talking about? <laughs> it's so early. Thriving. I haven't had enough, I haven't clearly had enough had coffee espresso yet. I got up really early. Before um, I let you go though, <laughs> we need to discuss the fact that I would say four to five times a week you make me cry because there's a sad song and there's you and there's sad dogs. Sorry. I am a dog <laughs> lover. I adopted a shelter dog. He is my life. Aww. I, it, it's just, it's like the saddest song. Everyone knows you hear the song, you get weepy, you grab something furry. I changed the channel. I can't you, take it. What? You change the channel I on yourself? I can't even, I can't even look at it. It's just so depressing. Um, but that being said, I mean, that, that ad generated over $30 million for the ASPC. It did amazing things. Um, you know, do I want to be remembered just for that? Absolutely not. I mean, I love animals, absolutely. But if I want to, you know, if, what, if I want to think about what my legacy would be, um, it would be more about kids and music, which is what, you know, that's my sort of true passion. So but think of how many puppy lives you've and saved. Fantastic. I love it. I love it. I just, it, I think it's, you know, it, it's fodder for so many jokes, you know, and it was fun doing the, um, um, the Audi commercial, the Super Bowl commercial for that, because we got to kind of take the piss out of the whole thing and, and add some levity to it, which I think was necessary. It breaks my heart. Every time I see um, it, I want to adopt a new dog, and I think my fiance is going to leave see, me. It but works like a hot damn. It really does. <laughs> it really does. I think, well, you're putting yourself out to be judged as a musician. I feel comfortable yeah. getting up on that stage because, you know, any critic will be hiding in the shadows right, right, and right. not necessarily comfortable stepping out on that stage and, and exposing themselves. Mm -hmm.